We're back on the road and uh, Viaduct Fishery is my destination today. It's um, uh, my third Fishermania qualifier of the year and I've only got 93 miles to go so uh, still some way away. I've got up at stupid o'clock and uh, what's it? it's only just got light now so uh, and I'm half asleep I must admit but um, I'm really looking forward to today I must say. It's, uh, Great venue, I love Viaduct Fishery. It's such a nice place to be sat fishing, nice and shallow and easy, comfortable to fish, other than the size of the fish, which are absolutely monstrous if you if you get it right. So uh, it's been very kind to me, um, this place over the years. I've uh, had some very, very big weights. Uh, once hold the Fishermania qualifying record from Viaduct Fishery with um, um, 250 something pound of carp, and that was just 18 fish. So, as you can tell, they're pretty big uh, kippers if you can land on them here. So, uh, I don't think I'm going to have anything like that sort of weight today. And I don't think I'll... I caught a lot of fish mugging uh, that day. And uh, it's pretty overcast and dreary and miserable. And we've got a bit of rain forecast and possibly thundery showers and all sorts today. So, I can't see that. You're going to want to draw on Cary or Campbell Lakes. I'm 90% sure that's the case. Springpool can have a chance. where I qualified from Springpool. That does have a chance. It all depends on how much room you've got on there. Um, it's not a done and dusted draw, you know, if the, you've still got to catch the fish. But Kerry and Campbell are definitely the hot lakes. And to be honest, I'd love to have a decent peg on Campbell. I like catching them big carp on the pole. But just as much, I'd love, love to have a nice down the waggler as well. A lot of bomb fishing at Viaduct. Um, and it'd be mostly pellets and meat. That's it, I can't see much else coming into play. So maybe some corn maybe some paste. Yes, there's only one winner, there's only one qualifier, and you've got to fish what's the winning method. Obviously, if you don't draw, great, then you can fish a little bit more conservatively and try and make the most of the day. But I'm going out to try and win this today, and it's gonna be um, a big carp or must job, I think, and uh, hopefully we'll have a few. I had last time, and that aerator was on all day. Um, and I'm here. Yes. Oh dear. Ah, oh, gutted.
Well, that was a disappointing session. Um, <laughs> um, it's pretty much what I expected, really. Um, I ended up with two carp and a skimmer for nearly twenty-five pound. No, so, sorry, twenty-four eight, I think it was. So, uh, and one of those carp was a ripe kipper as well. It was um, getting on for sixteen pound. Um, both not feeding a thing. Um, I've had one just chucking out on the waggler, fishing about two and a half foot deep with a bit of hair rig meat. Um, and then the second one, I've seen, seen a cruiser coming along and I've um, underarmed a, a little waggler about 18 metres out on its head and it's had it. Um, and that was it. That was literally um, all the action. I fished a full depth and um, a shallow waggler moving the depths around most of the match and a bomb over the top as well, casting it around. You can see fish rolling and stuff, but nothing a dome in its mouth, no liners, no nothing. It's ever so strange. Um, but those big fish, they just don't want to feed, do they? So, um, and um, I, I've had one good skimmer on a full depth waggler rig over the top. Um, when I started feeding, nothing happened but we had that rainstorm we had a bit of a thunder a bit of a thunder clap and a bit of rain and that that was that i think no the, the most well the, the lakes didn't really switch on so it didn't it hardly switched off but it just i don't think that rain helped i bet if we'd started fishing about four o'clock it would have been solid it would have been fish soup but um and that's when we ended and <laughs> that was that so uh, uh nothing's come down the edges um, the guy to my left's got a nice margin. He's had nothing down his edge. He's had three fish for about thirty-three pounds. So, so they're all big fish. And I think, I think five five carp, one one was section, and it wasn't. I was probably second or third on the lake. That so, um, uh, Woody opposite. He, he's the only guy I saw with an empty pallet. He's 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 caught a few fish. He might have had a hundred pound. I'm not quite sure. The guy next to him packed away as well. And then he ended up catching against, so he had two empty bags, one either side, and ended up catching against that pallet as well. So he's the only guy in the entire lake I saw catch with any consistency. And I think that just proves that you just need a little bit of room on a match like this. So, uh, so yeah, well, it was it was a nice day. I enjoyed it. It was it was uh, <laughs> kind of enjoyed it. We had a we had a laugh. Um, it was so close, everyone around you. We had a bit of a laugh and a bit of a chinwag. And um, I never really had a load of motivation really for the entire match. And um, Joe just I just had a day's waggle fishing and chucking a bomb over the top and I ate a bit of food and <laughs> had a nice leisurely drive home. So. Um, that's that really not not the best of matches I've ever had at Viaduct but but that's what fisher mains are all about you know it's a bit feast or famine for a lot of people but when you're on them it's it's well worth it because then you get a place in the final so uh, um next next fish show qualifier I've got is woodland view and um hopefully um good things <laughs>